so here, you know, if you're an owner of this project, and you're going into this, and, and uh, you're looking at, you're not only looking at your annual cost, you're not only looking at the total cost, you really need to look at the cash flow because you need to see how much cash is it going to cost you each year to operate this and what kind of revenue um, you're going to make or not over a period of time. So I did this and I now have a whole host of different scenarios here for that. And again, this is, um, as an owner on this project, you can see on the left hand side of each of those, the two and the three floor models, the annual cash flows for that. And generally speaking, you'll look through years, let's just go to um, year 2036, and you can see they're consistent up through 2036. Well, 2036 is the year that the TIF falls off, so there's an additional cost to the city for three years on that. And the reason it's, the, that rises and then it falls and then that goes away in 2039 is because that's when the debt falls off the debt payment falls off for the city so the city has debt from 2019 to 2039 really 2038 for 20 years on that they have the benefit of the tiff revenue through 2035 and then beyond that it's just if it, as an owner they have the revenue side from the retail property. So over the 30 year course of this, and again, when you build government structures in today's environment, you're typically building facilities that are gonna last a minimum of 50 years. Um, you're, you're looking at something that's gonna last 50 years or, or greater on this, so a 30 year um, uh, cash flow snapshot on it um, is maybe half, of, but maybe not half on that. So the cost of this, if it were two floors to the city for 30 years, it would be just a little over a million, it would cost them a little over a million dollars for that. When just building the 10,300 square foot facility, if you assumed $125 a foot, a $90 TI on that, you're somewhere between 2.4 and probably 2.6 million dollars for the cost of that. And that's just the actual cost and not even in including any kind of interest and debt on that. So on the three floor, they cash flow positive at about $1.2 million, almost 1.3. And then on the four floor, um, they're almost $3.6 million. They generate $3.6 million on that. And not to belabor my $40,000 worth of rent on the second floor, but if you take that out, that number would improve by almost $700,000 when it on the fourth floor. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if you, just to digress with this, the discussion, when we talked about what the city needed, if we go to the 10,300 square foot, we didn't need all that for the foreseeable future, so there was a tenant possibility it would take 20, 2,500 square feet. So, you know, I you can't fix these numbers, but I'm just saying that that 3.5 would be well over four. But it, it could be, if it's $50,000, you know, if it's $50,000 a year, mm -hmm. at 30 years, mm -hmm. a million and a half. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, it, it's real money if you would include it. Again, it, it would just make it better. Yeah. It would just make that. I'm fine with a conservative. I'm just saying it yes. could, could be sizably better. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to give other typical instances and get more conservative. And you can show you. Okay. Quick question. So, and you had mentioned, I think on an earlier slide, was it a 20 year bond? Yes. Uh, okay, that's when you said that kind of corresponds when you said, hey, when the debt's retired. Yes. That's around what, 2000, or I'm sorry, 19? Yeah, 2039. I'm sorry, 39, 19 to 39. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. 30 years. So this includes now, if you included a 1% increase annually to the rents, to that, which is not unreasonable um, in any standard 
on that. Um, so you, again, just running it down, you know, your, it cost you the city $156,000 for the two floor model on it. Um, they net positive on the three floor, almost three million, and about six million dollars on the four floor model. And again, that's a one percent increase, no vacancy. Now let's go into some kind of. Do you have a question? Just a quick question. Have you looked at some other vacancy? Options like eighty percent vacancy. So Coming up right here. Um, typically, now I include a one percent increase and a um, uh, a ten percent vacancy on this. So you know, again, if you're a business owner, you, the bank's going to require you to, to to include a coefficient on that. And so this is a uh, conservative estimate on the residential side. 10% is probably high on that because you you know residential the residential market is fairly strong. You don't really have 10% vacancies in that. Um, on the retail side, that that's a reasonable number is 10% on that. So running that out and including a 1% increase on that um, for the two floor, it's about 1.2 million dollars. The three floor, you net about $1.1 million. And on the four floor, you net about $3.5, $3.6 million on that project. And again, it includes the existing debt, the tip, um, and everything else that we have in, in this building. And then Cincinnati, I don't have the hard statistics. The apartment business as a whole because I used to deal with all this town property and seeing see all those guys. The worst time that those guys had was right about when all the subprime lending was happening. So when the economy went south, the apartments filled up and they stayed filled up. And even at the worst moment, I think Cincinnati, the number I heard them banging about was about 88% fill rate. So worst case scenario in the last 20 years on a fill rate is 12%, so that 10% is very, it's still on the conservative side. Today, I would say that in Cincinnati, the average fill rate on good property that's not you know, below the level is probably in the 94 to 96%. I, 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 just, I just had somebody that was in that, and they, they're they at 95 to 97. Mm -hmm. So you're exactly you're right, right there is what they told me. Yeah. So okay. again, we're getting, so if you, have, if you have a concern about an economy crashing somewhere in the near future or distant future, the apartment business actually benefits from that. Right. Well, yeah, it's foreclosure to go up. Mm -hmm. You have somewhere to go. Yeah. Right. You just got to make sure you only have 13 people in one bedroom. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. It's good. I decided to just throw one in there that this is at the world end. This, this is a nuclear is, war. <laughs> this is if you get to um, something worse than 2008 or a significant recession in that and assumes a 30% vacancy in that. And again, you can see the escrow amounts that I include, $25,000 a year for the two floor, 35 and 45. Again, those are big numbers for escrow amounts and that's cash from the city that I would, that I'm just assuming that they take and they segregate that into a separate fund for a building maintenance fund into that. Um, you can see that. So if if that happened, this, and again, this is, in my opinion, the total worst case scenario. And if everything went wrong. And we didn't sell it because it was that way. Yeah, and everything, everything went wrong with the project. The cost of 30 years would be $3.1 million to the city on a 2-4, 1.5 to the city on a 3-4, and about 1.3 to the city on four floors at 30 years. And then just assuming that the build for just the government site on that is somewhere between you know 2.3 to 2.6 million dollars before the debt, that 3.1 number is less than what that would be um, over the period of time because of the debt structure on on the two point, you know, 
three to two point six million dollars on that. But I, I just want to give it all the options and to show what this looks like, you know, going forward, so that you know you can make a informed decision as to, you know, what's the worst case, what I believe to be the worst case scenario of the project. 